Hey guys, how's it going? It is Mr. Crayfish and welcome back today. I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your first application using the device API. Now, if you don't know what the device API is, you probably don't watch my channel, but I'm going to explain anyway. So it's basically a way for you guys to hook into my device mod and add in your own custom applications. So the device mod features a laptop uh, and an operating system that supports applications and pretty much allows you guys to write add-ons um, to the device mod, uh, which is really cool and was my entire, like, was my vision of this mod is having people actually develop, you know, custom applications, not just myself. Now, I did do a tutorial in the past, however, now it is actually outdated, so I thought I would do a brand new one for you guys, so you can uh, start creating your first application. Now, I should mention as well that this tutorial will most likely become outdated because this mod is still in development, it actually hasn't have had initial release yet. Once we do have that initial release, that's when these tutorials won't become outdated because I'll be making sure that the API does not break after that. Now, as I mentioned already, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the API and start building your first application. And we're just going to take a look at the application. I'm going to be showing you guys how to build. Now, this is not about the application. It's more about the fundamentals of building applications so you'll be learning about components you'll be learning about layouts we're also going to be learning how to handle button click so when we click this button here we want to like check what text is in those fields if they're the correct username and password let's go on to a different layout so if we actually do that right now uh, if we type mr. crayfish in here and then we type cheese that's going to take us to a different layer as I mentioned and then here we're actually displaying how much money we have in the bank and this is also using the bank utility class so that's going to introduce you guys into that because you might actually find it useful for your applications now again this tutorial is not how to build a specific application it's just about the fundamentals of building applications so let's get this started right now. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is to download the device API jar file. So how you can do that is either go to my GitHub, which I'll put a link in the description, or you can actually join the Discord server here. And I'll put an invite link in the description below. Uh, if you go to the downloads uh, channel here, you'll be able to find the latest API releases. So as of right now, we have the device API 0.0.3 and that is for Minecraft 1.11.2. So you want to go ahead and download that. Now, keep in mind of the version here of Minecraft because you're actually going to have to set up a Minecraft uh, modding environment for that version. Now, I am going to be assuming you already know how to set up a mod um, environment. This is not what the tutorial is providing. It's just teaching you guys how to create an add-on. You should know how to create this. So this is our mod class here. I've just implemented the initialization method. And then we've also got another class here, which just references, has references to all, you know, mod ID, mod name, mod version, and also the version that this will work on. So you should know how to do all this before you even start working with the API and developing add-ons in general. Now, if this tutorial strangely isn't outdated in the future, um, this may be like 1.12, 1.13. So make sure you set up uh, the API or your modding environment accordingly to the API version. What we're going to do next is go over to our uh, kind of project here, create a new directory. I'm going to call this libs. Now it has to be exactly that. So type in libs. And then what you want to do is drag that jar file into that libs folder. And you should see that we now have the device API inside of there. We've actually got to reference this folder as a library so we can actually use the code inside of the jar here. So what we're going to do is right click on libs here and then simply go down to add as library. Click, o click OK. Now what I'd suggest you do as well is also add the Java docs as well so you can get an explanation of all the methods and classes inside of the API. So we can simply just right click on that jar file open the library settings and then here you simply just want to click on add and then locate the uh, java docs so the java docs again uh, can be downloaded from github or even in the discord chat here so you can find as you can see 0.0.3 docs there download that and then simply just add it in so um, i'm actually going to grab it from the actual proper project here and click ok 
uh, and it should automatically, you know, find the correct route for it. Click OK, or click Apply, click OK, and now we should have the uh, Java doc atta um, attached, and we should be able to read what all the methods and classes do. And do note the Java doc is incomplete, so there might be something in the API that is actually undocumented, uh, but that will actually be fixed in the future. Now we're not done yet. What we've got to do is tell Forge that our mod is a child mod of the device mod. So what we're going to do is we're first going to go to our mcmod.info file here. We're going to create a new variable at the bottom here called parent. Uh, parent. And then we're going to set that to CDM. So that is the mod ID of the device mod. Uh, we're going to save, or that's automatically saved inside of IntelliJ. We also need to give our mod annotation here a special value, which will tell it to load after the device mod has loaded. So we're just going to go into our reference here and create a new public static string here. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. And we're going to call this depends, and we're going to make it equals. Now, this is a uh, special syntax here, so make sure you do this correctly. We're going to type in required, whoopsie, required dash after colon cdm at open square bracket, and then the API version we're using. So we're currently using 0.0.3, .0 so let's type that in. And then do comma and then close parenthesis. And pretty much what this tells Forge is that our mod should load after the device mod, and it also requires at least the 0.0.3 version of the API for it to work. Now, again, because this is not an initial release yet, once we do get to, you know, we have a major version here called 1 that's when API changes won't happen anymore. But because we don't have an initial release yet, API changes are likely to happen. So your mod might, or your application might work in 0.0.3, but it might not work in 0.0.5 whenever that comes out. So do keep that in mind that this mod is still in development. So changes to the API are still happening uh, and you will have to actually update your applications. <laughs> Uh, to adjust accordingly. So now that we've done that, we've actually got to add that to our um, at mod annotation here. So if we actually just hold up, let me just uh, bring this across so you guys can uh, see it. So at the end here of our at mod annotation, simply just add in dependencies equals reference. Whoops. Depends. So let's just take a quick look at that. So yeah, add that to the end there, and pretty much now, uh, when we load up Forge here, or let's load up the game right now, we should see that in the mod list, our mod is defined as a child mod of the device mod. Then go to the mods list here, you'll notice that our mod isn't actually defined in the list, it's actually defined as a child mod of the device mod here, and then you can actually see here the, all the child mods for our device mod and we have our tutorial app here. So that is all cool and set up now. What we're going to do now is start creating our first application now. As I showed you guys at the start of this video, uh, we're going to be creating a kind of, you know, simple login screen which will then take you to a, uh, another page which is actually going to show us our uh, bank currency that we've currently got stored. So, you know, nothing crazy, but it's just kind of like a small example for you guys. Now, if you're familiar with any sort of UI development, such as, you know, Swing, um, God forbid, um, <laughs> JavaFX, um, Android, you know, any, any sort of development, any user interface development, you're going to have a really easy time because I've built this API similar to other frameworks out there. So let's start this now. So the first thing that we're going to do is come over to our package over here and create a brand new one called app. So let's go package here and type in app. Now, if you're developing multiple applications, I highly suggest you create separate mods for each one um, because 
otherwise, you know, it's going to get a little bit unorganized, but it's also good to have, you know, an app for, you know, separately so people can choose which one they want to add in. They don't want to, like, add in an, a uh, kind of add-on which adds in a billion apps if they only want one of them inside of it. So, you know, set up a new workspace for each entire, for each new app you actually create. So inside of that app package, we're going to create a new Java class and we're simply going to call this tutorial app. So this is going to be our application class, obviously name it accordingly to whatever you're developing. Uh, you might be developing, you know, I don't know, Mindbook or something, the uh, uh, Minecraft version of Facebook or something like that, I don't know. Uh, and then we're going to make this extend application. Now make sure you use the right one here because there is actually three different um, classes here called application. The one we want is this middle one here, so it should be com.mrcrayfish.device.api.app. Implement that, or I mean, import it, extend it, and then implement the uh, methods here. And then we need to make a constructor as well. So we're going to get rid of, um, you know, those, and then we're actually just going to be uh, kind of hard coding the values in here. So the app ID is a unique ID. Um, for this application. So what I suggest you do is type in a reference dot mod ID so um, It will you know, it'll make it kind of unique straight away because you can't load up two mods inside of forge that have the same mod ID Then you want to do kind of the name of your app. So tutorial app Now, I am actually going to be changing this in the future. This is just kind of the current preferred way of doing it. Um, in the future, we're actually going to be using a res resource location. So in a new APO update, keep that in mind, um, you know, uh, that things are going to be changing because there is not an initial release here. Then the second parameter here is simply the name of your application. So this is the one that's going to be displayed to the person. So um, your mod ID, um, you know, it's not going to be visible to anybody. It's mainly this here. So this might not necessarily be um, tutorial app. It might be um, login, uh, you know, or, I don't know, bank displayer. I don't think that's a word. I don't think that's a word, but who cares? So that's pretty much the minimum you have to do to set up an application. All we've got to do next. Then next, we're just going to register the application. So come to your mod class and it doesn't really matter what initialization method it goes into, but maybe just for purposes, um, just put it in your initialization method. Um, and then we're going to type in application manager dot register application new tutorial app. So there we go. Our application is now registered. Let's go ahead and load this up now. Then go ahead, grab out our laptop. So we just go over here. Uh, don't mind that it doesn't have an icon at the moment that will be fixed in the future But open this up and then take a look in the app inside of the application here And we should have our app here bank displayer best application in the world and as you can see, you know It's it's nothing at the moment. It's simply just a blank application um, It's super duper sick. Um, I'm gonna release this It's gonna make millions of dollars not really because you can't do that with Minecraft um, but you get what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but what we're going to do now is actually start adding in components to this and uh, st start creating an actual application. So let's jump over to our application class here. And what we need to do is override a method called init or um, kind of short for initialize. And pretty much this is where you want to initialize all your components and uh, add them to the application. So let's start adding in some components. So we're going to start with the login screen and for that login screen, we're going to need to have a username field. We're going to need a password field. We're also going to need some labels to label those kind of um, text boxes. So for username and password. And then we also want to have a button for logging in um, to the... So... <laughs> And then we're also going to need a button to log in. Now, where we declare these variables is we want to declare them at the top of our application here. Because if you actually because if you actually declare them locally, you might run into some problems where you can't actually get a reference to another component because it is declared below where you're trying to write maybe like a click listener on a button. It is declared below it, so therefore you can't actually, you know, access it. So always suggest to create your um, declarations 
uh, on a global scope inside of your class here. So we're going to do private here. We're going to need um, some labels. So we're going to do private label. Make sure you import the right one here. There's a ton of them, which is insane. But it's this one here where it has com.mrcrayfish.device, API, app, and component. So import that one. And then what I like to do is also prefix the variable name with the type. So label and then kind of the description of what the um, variable is. So this is going to be label username. And it's also good when you're um, dealing with a lot of components when you're actually just down here in the initialization you could be like oh can I get access to all my labels yes you simply just go ahead do this label and then you know you've got a list of all your labels there which is really good so we need a label we need a field a kind of text field for that so we simply just have you know text field it's kind of you know named what you would think it is so you should be able to find it but I suggest as well you read the docs as well because that will give you guys a uh, kind of you know a full idea of what all the components were that are inside of the API here so if we go to the component package here these are all the components so we got button button arrow button toggle checkbox image inventory item list label number selector and so on um, you get the point there so text field and then import the correct one here uh, we'll do text field username and let's create you know the ones for the password as well so we can just copy that label password and then text field uh, password now there isn't actually a password field yet um, but I might do that in the future so we've got our text fields and our labels we've got to add in a button here as well so private button and make sure you get implement the correct one it should be for the from the component package and then we're going to call this button login so there we go let's start adding these to our app here so we're going to initialize them below so we're going to do label username equals new label and let's check out the parameters here. So as you can see here, we need to enter in some text and then we also need to give it a left and a top. So what the left and the top is, is pretty much the position of it from the top left corner here. So how many pixels do we move it uh, from the left and how many pixels do we move it from the top? So we're gonna go here and we're just gonna type in um, username because this is our username label. And then we're just going to do five and five for now. We're going to reposition this later on when we actually go into debug mode. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to go this dot add component label username. Now we are going to run into a problem later on in this tutorial, and I'm going to show you guys how to fix this up. But um, we're just going to start by using this method. I thought this would be a good way to know um, introduce you guys to what is called layouts. But we'll get to that. Um, later on we're then going to do text field username equals equals new text field and then what does this require it requires a left a top and then also a width now I should say that the default width and height of the application is 200 by um, 100 so keep that in mind uh, we can actually change that inside of the constructor here so we can do like this dot set default width uh, which we might actually change here. We might do it to 100 wide instead and then, um, you know, set. Uh, we might not keep change the height here. We're going to keep it the same as 100 there. So let's change around the width here. Um, let's go back here. Let's put in a position for this. So we're going to come 5 from the left and then from the top here, we're going to go 20. And then our width is going to be 90. Then again, add this component so text field add component uh, text field username so again do that for all your other ones so label password I'm just gonna speed this up here now and then let's put our button in as well so button login equals new button and then this one requires some different ones here so there's actually three constructors available for a button here so let's just check these out real quickly so the first one here is simply just for text so we implement 
uh, in uh, put in some text or a string here, a left top, and then also a width and a height for the button. These two constructors here are adding in a uh, kind of custom icon for the button instead. So maybe you don't want text, you want to have an icon. So the second one uh, will allow you to do that. Then the third one here is just a more advanced version, which allows you to actually specify the width and the height of the button. This one here automatically does it uh, depending on the size of the icon width and the icon height. Uh, this third one just allows you to, you know, explicitly set it. Uh, but we're going to be using the first one here, which is simply just the text one. So we have login, then we def set the position, so five from the left, and then we're going to do, um, let's do uh, 75 here. Now, I've had a lot of experience with, you know, developing in the API, so I kind of got a visual inside of my head what it's going to look like already, um, but you guys might have to go into debug mode and you know test it out for yourself uh, and then we give it a width and a height so we're going to go width here as I don't know 50 and then a height maybe is like 15 or something like that and then again add the component there we go so now that's done let's go ahead let's load up the game here and we should actually see these components now added to our application and let's check out application here and have a look at that. That was um pretty good positioning on my part. Um, I didn't even test this out. I just kind of predicted these values off the top of my head straight away. And have a look at that. They're laid out really nicely, uh, except for this button could be a little bit bigger and we might make it um, as wide as these text fields here. But as you can see, you know, we can enter in stuff here. We can click the button there. Uh, nothing is happening at the moment because we haven't implemented anything, but let's go ahead. Let's fix this up I'm gonna make it that a bit bigger and then make it also a little bit wider as well So let's do that uh, What I do suggest you do is run it in debug mode because that kind of means that you can actually reload it and uh, Finally adjust it without having to load up the game every single time So let's go 90 wide here and then we'll also make it 20 high and then I think I'm gonna be I'm going to be quite happy with that. I'm also going to run it in debug mode just in case I'm not. And let's take a look at it here. And that looks amazing. I am happy with that. Uh, you know, don't want to do anything super duper crazy for this first tutorial. But as you can see, everything is set up here. We can do, you know, crayfish. Our password might be majestic. Now, I haven't implemented a password field as of right now. So it will be displaying, you know, um, the actual password to you instead of just asterisk like like this it should display it as that But right now it's not so it's just, you know our passwords majestic here So what we're going to do now is we want to when we click this button here log in We want to take it to a kind of new section in this application, which is going to display um, How much money we have in the bank now? There is already a bank app here uh, and as you can see we have zero dollars in our bank but we're actually going to be we're going to be displaying it inside of our bank displayer here, you know, just for tutorial purposes, and it'll give you guys an insight on how you can actually use the bank utility as well, um, because it is actually designed for you guys to implement it into your own applications. Let's say if you're creating some sort of store application, maybe you're developing kind of like a application which adds on to your own mod that adds in food. Um, you can use this bank U2 as kind of the currency and then you know you'll be able to people where people will be able to buy food from your application and use kind of the inbuilt currency system on the laptop to buy it with. Now the next step to this application is making it so when we click this login button, it's gonna check if the username and password field is correct. If it if so, make it display our bank balance. Now you might be wondering how do we actually do that? Because, you know, we've got to like remove these components, add another one in which then displays, you know, our bank balance. Now I purposely did this problem so you guys would get a better understanding of what we're about to learn and this is layout. So layouts are pretty much a way for you to easily switch out the kind of the set of user components we are displaying on the application right now. So. This is kind of like the login screen. We're going to have another layout, which is for displaying the bank. So pretty much we're going to have two layouts here. One is the login layout and one is the display balance layout. 
So this pretty much enables you to have different areas inside of your application. It's not just, you know, one user interface here. You can have multiple different types of them. Now, a good example of this is the email application. So we have our layout for the inbox. We have a layout for displaying an email. And we also have a layout for writing an email. And in the future, there will also be layouts for adding in a contact, which might actually be a dialogue instead. And that will actually be a future tutorial in the future that I'll be doing uh, dialogues, you know, when you click this button, it might show a dialogue like, are you sure you want to log in? Um, that type of stuff. But that's a future tutorial. Uh, so we're going to start by adding in our own kind of layout definition because this is using the default layout. We want to make add in our own custom layout so we can actually control what is being, what component, what set of components are being shown and being able to switch between the two. So let's close this off. Let's go back into our program here. So as you can see here, we're simply doing this dot add component. And this is just, you know, when we click on add component here, we're saying add this component to the default layout. Uh, what we're going to do instead is create our own custom layout. So go above here uh, where we have all our components and let's type in layout, private layout. And then we're going to call this layout login. Now make sure you as well import the correct um, layout here, it should be from the app package here. Now just quickly I want to mention that a layout is not only kind of to wrap components inside of, they are actually components themselves as well. So pretty much you can nest a layout within a layout now. that inst For that to happen, um, that is kind of, you know, going into a more advanced application. Um, it's highly unlikely that you'll be uh, doing that, but sometimes it is kind of, you know, it might be useful to for you to be able to uh, do that. Now, that's probably only happening in an advanced example. Um, it's most likely that you're not going to need to nest it, but there is the option if you want to. Um, so now that we've got that layout, um, we're actually going to get rid of um, this set default width here because we're not going to need that. Pretty much we can actually decide what the width and height is going to be of this layout when we actually initialize it. So here we're going to do layout login equals new layout. And then we've got a couple of parameters here. One is a width and a height where it's going to default the left and the top position to zero. Then the second parameter here allows you to actually explicitly set it. So this is where I said, um, you know, if you are nesting it within inside of a layout, you can actually position it. Um, you know, to wherever you want. And I just like smacked my table there with my knee and everything just shook. You may have heard it on the recording. Um, but let's just, you know, we're gonna, we're just going to be setting the width and the height instead here. So um, we're going to keep it the same as 100 and 100, I think is the default width. Let's just double check that uh, default layout. Where is it being initialized? So it's just new layer and as you can see, it's 200 by 100. We're going to keep that same, um, let's go, where is it? <coughs> We're going to keep that same width and the same height there as we did before. It's just inside of, you know, a layout where you can kind of control now. And then pretty much instead of saying this to add component, we do layout login dot add component. So replace all these. And then we also need to tell the application which layout to display. So we go this.set current layout and then layout login. Now I'm not going to run this, but pretty much if you've done this all correctly, it's going to be exactly the same as what we displayed just before. Um, you're not going to see any difference visually. It's just in code here. We now have control over which layout is visible inside of the application. Now what I wanted to do, as I said, is make it so when we click on that, um, login button. It's going to check the password, username and password field. If they're correct, take us to a new layout which will display our bank currency. So pretty much what we're going to do here at the top is, um, you know, create a public, private static final string username. Uh, now obviously you wouldn't want to do it like this, but this is just for tutorial purposes. Maybe you'll use some different sort of 
um, strategy of you know saving username and passwords. Now I will be doing a tutorial in the future on how to actually um, you know save and load data because I feel like it's enough to actually have its own separate tutorial so make sure you watch out for that in the future right now you know we're not going to be doing it we're just creating like our first basic application uh, so pretty much what we want to do is that login button here what we're going to do is add in so we're going to type in button login here we're going to do set click listener so this allows you to control the action um, of um, the button here when we actually click it now we are going to convert this to lambda instead uh, just because it's a lot easier uh, this variable here is actually mouse button um, I'm not sure exactly why it doesn't come up like that but you know just do that and pretty much we're gonna say if mouse button equals equals zero so um, mouse button when it's zero it pretty much pretty much means is it left click on the mouse and then inside of here we're gonna say if text field username get text equals um, username so is it equal to mr. crayfish and text field password dot get text dot uh, equals password so that would be cheese then if that's true we're gonna say switch to the layout and show our bank balance now we haven't created that um, uh, that second layout now but we're gonna do that right now so what I suggest you do is always kind of bunch your um, components up into their kind of own group here so this is where all the uh, components for layout login are we're going to do a space here uh, and then do another layout we're going to call this layout balance and then we're simply just going to have a private label here and then we'll call this label balance So we're going to set this label to whatever our balance is. Now you might be wondering how do we actually get that the balance and I'll be showing you in a second here. So let's just initialize this. So we're going to do it after all of our kind of initialization and definitions uh, for those components. We're going to start it here. So layout balance equals new layout and we might again, uh, let's just make this maybe a hundred and then fifty high instead so you actually see a change in the application width and height then we're gonna do label balance equals new label and we're just gonna by default set this to zero and then the top and the height is gonna be five and five now we can do a couple of things to this label balance as well as uh, as such as set the scale so we might set the scale to two now it's best to do kind of like a whole number because um, this doesn't work how it, you would kind of think it would work. Um, if you actually do something like 1.5 the text is actually going to be distorted so it's best to do kind of like a whole number here but I have given the option you know just in case. And then let's go layout balance dot add component uh, lay, uh, label balance here. Then let's come back up here and um, basically what we've got to do now is inside of here we just need to go if you know if the username and the password is correct we just go this to set current layout layout balance and it's going to automatically switch out all the components to the ones that are actually inside a layout balance here so you guys don't have to control anything like that automatically handled by the uh, core of um, this mod uh, all you simply have to do is you know set the current layout and it's going to remove remo remove all of them then add the new ones in uh, and there we go it's going to display our balance now not necessarily not necessarily right now we're just setting it to zero dollars if we actually want to make it so um, it um, you know updates this correctly here what we're going to do is on layout balance here what we're going to do is add something called a set initialize listener and pretty much um, what the initialize initialize listener does is whenever it is set as the current layout it's gonna call this method so maybe you need to run something every time that this layout is actually set as the current layout so pretty much what we're gonna be doing is updating the balance here using this 
uh, listen here every time the layout is set to layout balance here. So we need to create a new initialized listener. Uh, dislike that it doesn't come up with the lambda straight away, but here it is. Uh, let's just do that. Then we're simply going to be calling the bank util, and we're saying get balance, and then pretty much this requires a callback. Now automatically it knows which user to get. So all it requires is something called a callback. Now don't be too scared about this. Uh, pretty much what is happening is because all applications are handled on client side, it has to request, it has to send a request to the server to get the balance. Uh, we can't straight away, you know, set the balance or get the balance. We have to go to the server, query it, sends a response back, and then we set um, what the label is going to be. So we're going to do in here new callback. And again, I think we can convert that to Lambda, which is really nice. Uh, we have an MBT tag compound, and then we also have a Boolean here. Now we're going to rename this to success because pretty much um, what that means is that the request actually worked. So it's good to test that, um, you know, because you can explicitly, if you are getting into tasks, which there will be a tutorial in the future for, not going to go into it right now, but it pretty much allows you to execute server, uh, execute code on the server side, because obviously this is all handled client side. If you actually want to modify anything, uh, in the world or give a player an item, you need to handle that on the server side. And that's where tasks, tasks come in. So if it was successful, what we need to do is get the balance from the NBT um, tag compound here. Now we can actually figure this out what the tag actually is. So we're going to go into get balance here. As you can see, this is uh, sending off a task called get balance. Uh, and it sets the call back to whatever we provide here. If we go into task get balance here, um, you know, it sends to the server. Uh, here is the code that's processed on the server here. It's getting an account for the player that sent the packet. So that is us. So straight away, it already knows who it is. Uh, we get the balance. Um, and then down here in prepare response, we're simply setting balance to this dot balance. So uh, basically what, um, you know, we're setting the tag here to balance. So we just simply just go back to our um, tutorial app here and inside of this tag compound, we simply um, can get that value by going nvt tag dot get um, integer balance. Easy as that. So pretty much we just, we got an integer here. So we simply just need to update this label here. So we'll instead go label balance dot set text uh, cache sign and then plus that integer. So there we go. That should now update it and we'll even test that out just to prove that it does actually work. So let's go ahead and let's load up the game now and we should have a working uh, bank displayer. Let's take a look at our application now. Let's go to here, let's type in uh, Mr. Crayfish here. Now obviously have to type it incorrectly here. Then our password was cheese. Let's click on login and hopefully this works. Hey, there we go. So it's displaying zero dollars here. Now just to prove that this does actually work, let's go ahead and let's add some money to our bank here. So let's just grab out some emeralds real quickly. You should get familiar with the emerald bank here, real easy to use. Um, this will be changed in the future. I currently don't like it. It looks like a calculator. Um, I want it to look modern and really awesome. But as you can see in our wallet here, we got 64. So let's deposit those 64 emeralds into our bank here. They've gone from our wallet. They've gone from our inventory. Uh, but let's go back to our bank display app. Let's type that in there, Mr. Crayfish. And then cheese here. And as you can see, it is now displaying 64 instead there. We didn't hard code that 64. That is actually coming from the initialize, initialize listener we implemented, um, you know, to up or to send off a request to the bank, uh, get our balance and then, um, you know, update this label here with it. So that is kind of a good introduction to uh, the bank util as well, which is, um, you know, something you might want to delve into at one point. 
But uh, that is actually going to end off this tutorial today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully it gives you a good insight on how to start your first application. Um, I wanted to make this tutorial as easy as possible and I've actually recorded this for the third time. Uh, was it saying it here? I, I just ignore that. Um, but yeah, I recorded this for the third time because I felt like the two, the two previous attempts weren't good. But I'm really happy with this one. So go ahead and snap that like button, show your support and uh, subscribe because I'm going to be doing more tutorials. Um, I definitely want to do some tutorials on tasks and also dialogues and, you know, being able to save data as well because that is an important kind of thing about, you know, applications, being able to save data. If you guys have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comments below. Um, I will actually be putting the source code for this up on my GitHub, so there'll be a link in the description below where you can check it out, check out the source for this, test it out on your own, maybe you want to clone it and just, you know, play around with stuff in here, uh, you can do so. Um, and also I want to mention as well that join the uh, Discord server as well because this is where all of us actually kind of come together as developers like of the API and you know you can get help here, you can get support, um, you know you can suggest um, stuff for the API so maybe you need something, uh, a new component in, it's a good way to suggest it here, uh, post screenshots of what you're developing and you know just talk about stuff and have a good time. Um, but yeah, that's going to end up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.